This will be part one of the two-part kitchen renovation series. Today, I'll show you how we refaced our kitchen cabinets. And in next week's video, our contractors will be replacing our countertops, floors, and installing recessed lighting. It's a huge transformation, so you're not going to want to miss out. But before we start, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future DIY and home improvement videos. And with that being said, let's begin. Here's what our kitchen looked like when we first moved into our place. Overall, the fluorescent ceiling light, brick red tiles, the dark cabinets, and the tiled countertops made the kitchen very cool toned and uninviting. I want the kitchen to feel really warm and airy, so I jumped onto Pinterest to get some inspiration. Initially, I wanted a butcher board countertop, but it was a lot of maintenance, so I decided to opt out of the idea. I was also thinking of integrating the brick red tiles with the new cabinets, but I just didn't like the style. After a bit of searching, I found this kitchen with light toned wood, marble countertops, and brass hardware. It was exactly what I was envisioning, so I drew inspiration from this design. Here, I'm mocking up the design for the kitchen using a digital illustration app. I know it's a bit janky, but I wanted a rough idea of what the design would look like. I don't have the footage, but essentially the first step is to remove the cabinet fronts and sand them down. You'll also want to degrease the cabinets because chances are it's probably really disgusting. Here's an example. The amount of caked on grease on the cabinets were absolutely disgusting. It almost looked like it was fossilized on. But after removing the grease, I decided I wanted the fronts to have a smooth finish, so I filled the wood grain with a filler. This step is completely optional, feel free to skip it. You'll want to sand down the wood grain filler when it's dry for a smooth finish. I repeated this process about three times across all the cabinets. And as always, all the materials will be listed in the description down below. The next step is to apply a primer coat. Using a primer when painting cabinets is crucial for several reasons. The primer ensures that the paint sticks well on different cabinet surfaces, and it also evens out the pore surfaces to prevent uneven paint absorption. A great tip is to have your primer tinted the same color as your paint. It'll take you less paint to get a full coverage. Just ask the people at your hardware store really nicely. Maybe wink at them or something. <laughs> no guarantee though. After the primer coat has fully dried, it's time to paint it with a cabinet enamel paint. I chose a satin finish because it's durable without looking too shiny and outdated. The color I picked was Bear's Plateau. I'm also using this heavy duty paint sprayer to apply the paint because I wanted an ultra smooth professional finish. You'll also want to get the True Airless 311 spray tip as well. A paint sprayer is definitely an investment piece, but you don't have to actually get one. You can achieve a similar look with just a paint roller. The paint sprayer essentially atomizes the paint into fine particles, creating a smooth and consistent coat. If you have a large paint job like refinishing your cabinet fronts, it may be a good option since it covers large surface areas quickly. Now, the downside is the steep upfront cost of the machine and it is an absolute bitch to clean out after using. When you're finished with painting, you have to immediately disassemble and flush out all the removable parts and there's a lot of them, or else it will get clogged. But I still think it's worth it because look at the finish on these drawer fronts. They're so gorgeous. You'll want to set up some space for the pieces to dry. In our case, we dedicated our entire living room for this purpose. You should also lay down some tarps to protect your floors, but since we we're planning on redoing our floors, we didn't bother protecting them. Each cabinet door is elevated on a box to allow one side to dry completely before we repeated it on the other side. Oh, and I also want to add that we use painter's tape to number all the doors and match it to the corresponding location on the cabinet frames. Now that all the cabinet doors are dried, it's time to repeat the same process onto the cabinet frames. <laughs> so you're going to want to do some yoga beforehand because this is going to require you to contour your body in ways you've never done before. I would recommend using 80 grit sandpaper or lower to remove the previous finish. And like I've done to the cabinet fronts, I'm also filling the wood grains for the cabinet frame. And again, feel free to skip this process if you like the wood grain texture because as you can see, it adds a significant amount of work to the whole process. But because the kitchen area is the first thing that you see when you walk into the house, I wanted this step to be perfect. So let's talk about why we decided to paint the cabinets instead of completely replacing it. The obvious first reason is because of cost. I mean, have you seen the cost of wood lately? It's so expensive. Replacing the cabinets will require us to hire contractors to demolish and dispose of the original piece and then custom fit new cabinets in. The labor material would have been about 15 to 20k, not to mention that nowadays, most of the cabinets are not made out of solid wood like our original pieces. You might be wondering why we're removing the edge of the tiles if we hired contractors to replace our countertops in about a week. And it's because the edge of the tiles wrap about half an inch down the wooden frame. So in order for us to paint the entire piece, we'll need to remove it. I've never demolished anything in my life, but it kind of reminds me of those rage rooms that I'm seeing all over the internet. 
Okay, it's finally time to spray on the paint. But before we start, we have to tape out the entire kitchen so that the paint doesn't get onto the walls and the appliances. To be honest, at the beginning, I thought the process of refinishing your kitchen cabinets was going to be the easiest part, but boy was I wrong. The painting process was actually the easiest part, but the most tedious part was the prep work beforehand. I let the paint dry for a couple of days before I peeled off the tape. It's so satisfying. Remember to watch until the end for a total cost breakout of our kitchen cabinet refinish. Our contractors are coming in a week to replace the countertops, floors, and recess lighting, so stay tuned for part two of the kitchen renovation. I promise you it will be worth it because the final results are so good. If you recreated this project, please tag me on TikTok and Instagram. I would love to see it. It's at Kelly's Beehive. If you have any questions about the kitchen renovations, please leave them in the comments down below. I read all your comments and I really appreciate them. Or just drop by and say hi. And as promised, here is the total cost of the kitchen cabinet refinish. If you were to purchase all the materials and tools that I used in this project, it will cost you a total of $865 USD. I think that is already really amazing considering the fact that if you were to replace all the cabinets, it will cost you about 15 to 20K USD depending on where you live and what kind of material that you use for your cabinets. Now, if you were to opt out on using the paint sprayer, the wood grain filler, and the Ryobi sander, the total cost is only $377, which is incredible. But then you might ask me, how long did it actually take you to refinish your cabinets yourself? It took us a span of two and a half months to finish this project. Now, keep in mind we were not working on it full time. And it was also our first time using a lot of these power tools. So if it's not your first time using power tools, you might be more efficient than we are. But with a significant cost savings, I would encourage you to take on this project if you are thinking about painting your kitchen cabinets. Just skip the wood grain filling and use your paint roller instead. But if you have the funds and you don't want your kitchen to be decommissioned for a few months while you cook most of your meals using your outdoor grill and microwave, then you should replace the cabinets. It ultimately depends on your preference and budget. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Remember to stay tuned for next week's video where I show you the total renovation for the kitchen. I've been getting out of my comfort zone and trying new things. I hope I can inspire you to do the same thing as well. Oh, and I've been getting into furniture flips lately and have a bunch of pieces in my garage I have to work on. So if you're interested, that's also coming up soon. I'll catch you in the next video. And remember to stay creative. Bye.